Say what you will or may, it is quite apparent that in every generation, God lays his hands on men. Men who are obviously uniquely gifted. Men who can present the gospel of Jesus Christ and administrate and engage ministry in a way that others cannot. Every now and then, God will send a man through our brotherhood yes. that makes you ask the question, why is it that there are some men who are blessed with gifts mm. and other men whose gifts God blesses? Oh, yes. Tonight, it is my privilege to introduce to you a pioneer. Yes. It is my privilege to introduce to you a man of many firsts, a list too innumerable. Time would not permit for us to tell the plethora of first accomplishments of that eminent, internationally known author, debater, defender, preacher, television preacher. Yes. Man of God, founder of the WF Theological Institute in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, president of the executive committee of the National Churches of Christ Lectureship. Tonight, his friend, I said his friend, I heard it with my own ears. I heard it, Peggy. When your father said to Brother Washington, Washington, if I go first, I want you to do my eulogy. And Washington say to, well, if I go first, I want you to do my eulogy. So now you know why he's doing the eulogy. All right, all right. After a song from Jason Walker from the King's Church of Christ, the next voice you will hear of that unquestionable minister of distinction who will formally eulogize mm -hmm. Dr. R.C. Wells, all right. that preacher of preachers. Yeah. I said that preacher of preachers, yeah. Yeah. Dr. W.F. Washington. Give me that old time gospel. Give me that old time gospel. Oh, give me that old time gospel. Oh, yes, it's yes, good enough for me. Give me that old time gospel. Oh, give me that old time gospel. Oh, give me that old time gospel. Good enough for me. Oh, it was good for Paul and 
made my life complete, and I really think that that to a degree I made his life complete. Yeah. Because you see, in this business, you can't talk to everybody. Yeah, that is true. That's true. That's true. That's true. careful how you talk to anybody. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but with with Roosevelt, it was a it was a different kind of relationship. And so uh, I'm just grateful, uh, Dorothy and Peggy and uh, Stacy and the family just to be here and to say a word about uh, a great husband and a great daddy. And, uh, and, and okay, leave that alone. Leave that alone. Can't go there. Can't go there. Uh, let me see, where can I go? <laughs> hey, where, where can I go? Um, I got a call some years ago from from California, the church was, it was disturbed. And there was a very serious problem going on in that congregation. And, um, the uh, leaders called me and said, Brother Washington, we need you to come uh, because uh, this church is going to explode. Mm -hmm. and, and we need you to come. And I said, uh, what's the problem? And he told me what the problem was. And uh, I said, okay. Pick up the phone and uh, call Roosevelt. And I said, Roosevelt, i got to go to Los Angeles. Uh, there's a church having some real serious problem out there. His response was, uh, when you need to go. I said, I told him when it was. He said, I'll be there. He said, I'll, I'll meet you in Los Angeles. Ooh. And he showed up. Uh, and that, not just one time. Uh, when when, when, when this, this church uh, was having uh, some problems with the Muslims, uh, Roosevelt called me and he said, uh, you need to come in here. And I said, for what? He said, uh, because the, the Muslim wanted well, to debate. Some of you maybe were in that debate. Uh, and I said, why don't you do it? <laughs> and he said, um, I call you. <laughs> and so we came in and, yeah. and, we did the, and we did the debate. It was a great debate. It's on video now. It was on, uh, on YouTube. Okay. And when it came time for me to debate Baptiste in, in, in Fort Lauderdale, mm. I called Roosevelt. And I said, I, I need a moderator. He said, I'll be there. And he came and he moderated that debate. When I, when I debated uh, Bishop Johnson over across the river in Jersey, mm -hmm. uh, I called Roosevelt. And I said, I, I need you to moderate this. See, Roosevelt was a, he was a moderator. Yeah. See, Roosevelt didn't play. Yeah. I mean, if, 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 if folks not acting right, Roosevelt would get up. Yes, he would. And say, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. That's right. Mm -hmm. And uh, he was, uh, he was certainly a stalwart child of God. Yeah. And he was a, he was a soldier. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. He was a soldier. And I certainly uh, am going to, uh, I, I wish I could tell you this, but I can't because I know uh, I'm going to become a bucket of water if I try to tell you this. But, um, but that's okay. Just know, take my word for it, that Roosevelt uh, was not only a man in every sense of the word, but he was God's man. Oh, yes. Now, oh, I know yeah. he had an air about him, uh -huh. standing tall, yeah. mm -hmm. took no foolishness, no, no. But, but Roosevelt had a tender heart. Yeah. Yeah. He, he had a tender heart. Yes, he did. I know that 
times I can remember the night that the, at the Hyatt some few years ago we sat together and cried. Uh, not because we was having personal programs, but it, we, we cried because of, of some things that were going on in the church and, yeah. and, and we talked about our humanity. Yeah. How that sooner or later you know, all that we have done is going to go before us, and we're going to have to stand before just God. Oh, yes, yes. And uh, real serious, real serious stuff. I, uh, and, and I'm just so grateful that that I was able to uh, share uh, uh, my relationship with, uh, with Roosevelt. And, 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 and you remember the Harlem Church. I know you remember uh, 35 years I came to this church. Uh, every year. 35 years. And uh, because that's the way Roosevelt did it. And, he wanted it that way. Uh, and then he said to me, uh, he said, listen, Church of Christ ain't never been in the Apollo. He oh. said, we need to go to the Apollo. Right. And uh, he was the first one to try it. Okay. As, as a matter of fact, they told him. I can't think of the name of the person that we were in charge there. They told him, he said, well, we, we, don't, we don't have those kind of things. Roosevelt was explaining it. See, Roosevelt said, we want a gospel me. All right. And the folk in the apartment said, what's that? That's <laughs> 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 Because James Brown has just been there. Lord. <laughs> Somebody said it to me, and uh, they set him up in the chair, mm. uh, and then he was. 
because he was, he was talking about uh, the uh, uh, about Jesus uh -huh. and how there is just one church. Oh, yes. mm -hmm. And even in the facility, uh, we're going to miss him. Oh, yeah. yes. Yeah, we're going to miss him. I'm going to miss him. Yeah. But uh, I just believe that sooner or later, I'll see him again. I said I'm going to talk to you about Noah. Yeah. But, but in order 
to talk about Noah. And you have to understand the context. And that's so important, preachers, when you preach. There is such a thing as context. You, you don't just pull in scripture after scripture after scripture. May not mean anything if you don't contextualize it. And so, and so I don't have time to contextualize except to say to you, we have always talked about Noah and the ark. And we have always preached, and we still preach, that the ark represents the church. Okay. And, 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 uh, and, and, the, and the one window, and, 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 and the one door, yes. and, and the, the, the one family. Yes. And we, 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 we preach that it was that instant that represents and represented the church. When you get into typology, yes. when you get into symbolism. Of the Old Testament, when you get into Christology in the Old Testament, yes. that, 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 that kind of sermon is correct because, because knowing the art was a type, it was a symbol of Christology in the New Testament. Mm -hmm. But now, but after it rained. The symbolism doesn't stop. When that boat rested on Mount Iriac and the rain stopped, God decided it was time for Noah to come out of that ark. But before, listen to me carefully. Because, I'm almost finished. because before Noah came out of the ark, he set out a raven. And he not only did he set out a raven, but he sent out a dove. Uh -huh. Now let me talk to those of you, and I think Rosa Pepper told me to say this. Let me talk to you who are members of the Lord's church. I want you to see the symbolism in the raven and the dove. Now God said, I'm going to, literally speaking, I'm going to kill everything that didn't go in that ark. I'm going to destroy everything in whose nostrils was the breath of life. And in other words, there's going to be some dying on the outside of the ark. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. So, when the ark rested on my area, the Bible says, Noah sent out a raven. Now, take some time, Brother Preacher, and, 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 and define Ravenism. Take some time to find out what the raven represented. Take some, don't take much, but just take some time without just saying it to do a little research on the raven. Raven is a scavenger. Okay. All right. Raven is a buzzer.
from the ark. That's right. You become. That's true. And what will happen is you will lose your way back. That's right. Find your way back. That's right. But once yes. you remember that you have in you the Holy Spirit of God. Yes. And as the Holy Spirit touches you and breaks you, there was only one thing for you to do. Make up your mind. They go back to the earth. And there stands God. Waiting to pull you in. Is there somebody here today who want to come home? Is there somebody here today who say who who will say who it may be saying to yourself, Brother Washington, I haven't thought about that. But I don't want to be the raven. I don't want to get so involved that I can't come back. That's right. That's right. So while you while you still have the dove propensities. While you still can be touched, yes, yes. come on home. Come on home. You heard the story of the of the morning glory. We have we have what well, we have morning glories in East Texas, and they bloom every morning. That's why they call them morning glories. But if you were, and I tried, to go out to the fence or wherever the morning glories are and touch them, turn it loose, step back, and touch it again. You still get it. Turn it loose, step back, and then move forward, touch it again. You will feel but a slight vibration. Step back, move forward, touch it again, and you don't feel anything at all. It has to touch to death. And so here's what I'm asking you. Before you turn into a raven and begin to enjoy evil and begin to enjoy sin and your conscience has been pricked with a higher, I'm asking you, while you still have a little dull India. All right now. Come on home. That's powerful, yes. God is waiting. Oh, yes. And I think Roosevelt would want me to do this. I think he would want me to ask everybody to please stand. Yeah. Everybody please stand. And while you are standing, if there is somebody in here tonight who would want that far away from home, I ask you now, be a dove. Come right home. Come home. That's it. it does not matter what the folk might say. That's it. It does not matter what folks saying, well, she was up there yet last Sunday. <laughs> yeah. Anytime it's time to come home. Come home. Because God is waiting. Oh, yes. 